Oh, it's so beautiful here in France. I mean, um, Italy. Hannah, you are in Germany. What? Germany? That's right. Germany isn't just a country for beer, it's also a country for wine. Germany has some of the best wine in the world. Let me prove it to you. Here's everything you need to know about German wine. Disclaimer, I used to think that German wine wasn't that great. Growing up in the UK, the German wine I drank was pretty sweet and honestly low quality. But my German boyfriend is from Germany's wine region and after trying the good stuff, I'm a full convert. Riesling is the flagship wine of Germany. Both the climate and the soil are perfect for it. In fact, Germany is rather more well known for its white wines than its red. And it's the world leader in Riesling and Pinot Blanc cultivation. Portugal drinks the most amount of wine per capita in the world, but Germany comes in sixth place. Germans drink around 20 litres of wine per year, which is less than their beer consumption. Fair enough. Germany's wine regions stretch across its middle and south. The 13 distinct regions boast over 15,000 vineyards. important export countries for Germany are the US, Norway, the Netherlands, the UK, Poland and China. They especially love the Riesling. It's even promoted by the German wine queen, most recently Katrin Lang. Since 1949, a queen has been crowned each year to represent German winemakers internationally. It's thought that the biggest wine festival in the world is in the German wine region of Rhineland Palatinate. And there you can also find the biggest wine barrel. Unfortunately, it is empty. Okay, now I want to find out how wine in Germany is actually drunk and what the regional differences are. As a vintner in the Mosel region, Matthias Meira can tell us all about that. So I can show you. It's the easiest way just to pour it. That's the traditional false glass for Schoppen or Schorle. And Schorle means you do like, you mix water with wine, but there's a lot more wine. So there's say one hand wide wine. So you go like that. And then you're doing one hand wide, <laughs> but the other direction, uh, that would be one way refreshing false region drink for a false wine festival. Then when you go a little bit abroad from the winemaking areas, you have the way of doing an apple, a cider. In that way, it's a sparkling cider. So usually it could be still, could be sparkling. Some people mix it, they, they put like Coke in it. Number three would be just a regular wine. So you're taking a, a wine glass, uh, pouring a sip of water, and then that would be the most sophisticated way of wine drinking, I would say. <laughs> All right, it's vocab time. Here are some words and phrases to make you sound like a German wine expert. Weintrauben, the grapes that make the wine. Jahrgang, the period in which the grapes are harvested. Edles Tröpfchen, this is a colloquial way of saying that the wine is good, but it directly translates to noble droplets. The grapevine is one of the oldest plants in the world. Wine has probably been around since the dawn of mankind. After all, it doesn't take much more than grapes to make it. About 2,000 years ago, the Romans brought wine to Germany and the surrounding areas. It took some time before German Riesling was cultivated. It's officially mentioned for the first time in the 15th century. For everything else that you need to know about German wine, I'm meeting Ulrike Bohr, who runs her winery according to family tradition. This vintner from the Mosel region knows very well what makes Germany's wine culture so special. In our regions, it's typical that we have small family businesses and all the wine, like cellars and wineries, are located in the small towns. And outside, you only find the vineyards. It's different. If you go to, to France, you have the chateau in the middle and the wine fields around. Is climate change affecting the way that wine is being cultivated in Germany? We need water to rise them up. 
before we didn't need it. So we start now to bring water to the wine fields. That will change. So it's very normal for other wine regions, but not for all of Germany. And maybe the, the type of wine will change. Normally we, li we like the fresh and elegant style. And when it's getting too hot, the wine will have too much sugar, too much alcohol. Personally, I always had the feeling growing up in the UK that Riesling was quite sweet, but is that, it's definitely not in Germany. So can you tell me why that is? Oh, we love Riesling. <laughs> <laughs> From the history, we produced more sweet wines in Germany because German people 30 years ago, they had the, the wine after their meal. They drink beer during the meal and then they want to sit together and have a nice glass of wine. And then it's nice to have a little bit sweeter. So the sweet wine, it's the most exported type of wine. But now uh, it, it changed. So we have now we have more the dry and half dry Riesling. Cool. Okay, I hope I've managed to convince you that German wine is seriously underrated. Sure, German beer is great, but German wine needs more recognition. Some of the best wine I've ever drunk has been right here in Germany. You need to try it and you also need to come and visit the beautiful wine regions. Prost! <laughs>